Hey folks, Jonathan here. Figured I'd do an update on everything and uh, let everyone know what my plans are here for the next uh, week or so. So uh, it'll give you an idea and you'll know why I'm not posting videos of uh, me working on the Roadster, which is what I really want to be doing, but sometimes you got other things you got to do. Priorities. So, garden. Looking good. Just getting ready to do, uh, tie these things back because they're not strong enough. They're bending, so we're going to tie them back to, uh, to hold them up, get the strings tighter. Because I know there's going to be some weight on it. Uh, got two cucumbers off so far and have ate them. And as you can see, we've got more coming. I guess you can see that one. Let me zoom in there. Where are you hiding it? There you are. So we've got them hanging on the on the vines and all over the place. And bell pepper. And I think these are jalapeno peppers. No, these are banana peppers. And these, I don't know, they might be jalapenos. I don't know what they are. Uh, we got the tomato plants from a friend of ours. Seven tomatoes on this one already. And, uh, you know, they're growing really well. And uh, anyway, we bought them six and uh, got them for near nothing. And then uh, she threw in the pepper plants. So it's sort of a surprise. We don't know what they are. And it looks like we've got a little bit of everything. We've got bell pepper and uh, banana peppers and possibly jalapenos. And I think whatever these are and whatever them are are different. So it may be all different kinds, which is not a problem. We're just going to grow whatever we get and eat whatever we get. So, you know, my wife's taking care of this because if, if I was, it'd probably already be dead. And, uh, but it's coming along. So, all right, let me show you some more what I got going on. Okay, so I've moved the roadster out from in front of the shop. It comes in a cat. She heard me out here. Now, you know, it's kind of crazy if you look at that wheel. And look at that opening of how far off that looks it's actually in the center of the bed if you go beside it and look so different angles makes it look different and that's weird but that's just the way it is that bed gets lowered down about three inches and the rear end the whole suspension will be down lower so it'll look pretty good but uh otherwise the car it's looking good i like it uh it's awfully long but you know, we didn't go any extra length, really. We just went where we had to go. So, uh, we'll be back on it soon. But I've got plans for a couple of different things, and I'm going to show you what I've got. Okay, one thing i got planned, I'm going to build this engine. This is uh, the engine out of the race car. Uh, this is a pre-1980 engine. Don't know what year. Uh, it is 4-bolt main, 350. And two-piece rear seal, uh, driver's side dipstick and it's had you know quite a bit of work done to it it's the one that's got the i've got uh manly pistons for and all that so we'll be cleaning it up really well uh polishing the crank getting everything ready and start putting it together and i'm gonna run a set of double hump heads i'm probably gonna order a finned aluminum oil pan i'm gonna run my mt fin valve covers i'm gonna run that dual four barrel mt intake and uh just try to make it everything old, old school. I've got double hump heads, but I've got the early, the four, I think they're 461 casting with the, uh, they're 461 and 462, but they've got no bolt holes. So I think they're 461, but uh, the, the original old double hump, so we're gonna run them on it and uh, put a big cam in it, just uh, something to play with. Not sure exactly what I'm gonna put it in yet, but I've got an idea. Okay. Uh, the. Small block Chevrolet build is not what I'm planning on doing in the next week. What I plan on doing, uh, one of the reasons I moved the car from in front of the shop and clean it up, I want to bring this up to the shop. And what this is, this is just some, well, I ain't going to say scrap, uh, some good metal for building some stuff. I've got some uh, Delrin bushing material, some plate, and that's some two-inch thick plate there. But anyway, what I've got, so I've got this uh, 4x4, 19 foot. I've got these two, which are not quite long enough, so we're going to cut this one and add to it. But these are going to be, that's going to be the center of a carport building. That's going to be the outsides. I've got the legs 
I got four of these. There's only three here, but I've got four of these. This is four and a half inch. They got stainless covers over them for some reason. So we're gonna cut all these at eight foot. And just so they'll all be the same and or maybe a little over eight foot, whatever the longest I can get out of that center one because that's the shortest one. Anyway, we're gonna chop it. We we'll use these for legs. Uh, weld all four of them on. We're gonna build this thing upside down. Uh, I'm gonna build weld the entire thing together and then we're gonna move it, flip it back over uh, upright with the help of Minicat. And then I'm gonna put it in beside my other building. We'll put it on this side of it. And uh, I'm actually gonna try to make it where I can move it again if I need to. It's only gonna be 14 by 18, but that's enough to get two cars in, side, you know, beside each other. And here's what's left of the tree. Not much. Uh, so, probably, let me see what time it is. I guess about four hours from now, it will have been 48 hours since I started that fire. So, it'll just about be all burned up in 48 hours. Now, if I would have had a fan on it, if I would have had uh, maybe stoked it a little bit more. Also, if we didn't have a thunderstorm last night that basically, you know, just didn't put it out, but, you know, just about did. We would probably be done with it, but as you can see, there's really just not much left. And uh, so, keep burning it, keep turning it. Uh, it's nice to have a skid steer. It's even nicer when you got a diesel gas machine around fire. I don't know that I'd want to run one, but but anyway, we got this uh, just about taken care of. Okay, folks, the other job that uh, I have got planned for this week involves this barrel, this vacuum pump, which looks lot, just like a supercharger. This thing uh, is definitely going to make a heck of a vacuum. Uh, this thing, I think it's rated for 3,400 RPM. Uh, we'll just run an electric motor and some belts to it. I even thought about running a five horse brake and making a portable gas vacuum planter, but decided I don't think I'm going to do it. Uh, picked up this hose. I don't know how much I've got of it, but it, a friend of mine gave it to me, and I mean, it's, I don't know, if I was to guess, let me see. It might be 50 foot, 40 foot, probably 40 foot of hose. There's quite a bit here. So the plans are is to build a sort of a vacuum on steroids. I want to build uh, a vacuum that uh, that will, uh, you know, near about suck the carpet out of a car. You know, I've, uh, I've I've been needing one. I've had a couple of little ones over the years, and they just burn up and uh, just ain't you know don't mount to much. So we're going to build our own shop vac, and this is a commercial industrial. You know vacuum that uh, for a factory and I think our only fear is going to be we're gonna have to come up with a system a check valve system to keep just in case something was to clog this hose up to keep it from thing is collapsing the hose possibly but my biggest fear would be it collapsing our barrel our drum that we're using for vacuum you know for the tank so but that's coming up this week we're gonna film that and post videos of it and hopefully somebody will enjoy it we'll either uh, I don't know if we're gonna Create a monster of some sort. All right. Okay. Another project that uh, that I picked up that I got to put an engine in. It's got a little body damage. Nothing major. Uh, 2004 SSR, uh, 5.3 liter. It actually uh, got the nose in a little bit of water and sucked up some water in the intake and locked it up. So I bought an engine to put in it. Uh, this is an all-aluminum block uh, engine, or an all-aluminum engine, but we're going to uh, we're going to put a 5.3 cast iron in it because uh, you know it'll still run and drive fine with that, you know, with either. So, and we'll save the other engine. Uh, I don't know if it bent to rods or what it done, but it definitely had done something to it to mess it up pretty bad. So, we'll get on this project too. I might do a little bit of filming on this, but. This is not a big deal. I mean, this won't take long to do. All right, I guess we've got to add a cold start in. Uh -oh. Okay, why I haven't been driving this car. I don't know what happened. If it happened during the wreck, well, I know part of it did. One of my subscribers came by, Joseph Petrie. He, I think he's out of Tennessee. He, uh, truck driver, he stopped by 
and I was trying to get this seat back on track and he helped me because it was a big pain and we got it back on track where it was supposed to be but I think when this car was wrecked it knocked it off track so now when I sit in this car I know it's got major issues on the interior upholstery rise and the carpet and stuff but it's still it's just leaning back way too far I cannot stand the way this car sits and you know I'm not I like to drive so if it don't sit like I want it to sit I'm not going to drive it because it's just I'm leaning way back too far I guess if I was a gangster or something it'd be different but uh, it just makes you feel like you're you know you're leaning back and the front of your legs are up so high that you can't reach the pedals right so we're going to do something about this seat I just can't stand it I've got 241 Chevrolet's that might have a seat that'll fit uh, if so, we'll recover it and put it in. But I want to do this interior. And I want to do the dog crap burl on the uh, garnish moldings, the dash, and all that. And uh, that's something that I really look forward to. The only really major rust on this car is going to be right here and on this floor, mainly right here. It's not really bad on the other side. There's a little bit between the battery box and the, the actual rocker, you know, about like it is right here. But this has got some really bad stuff right there. Uh, not a problem, you know, it's not a big deal to fix. I mean, we'll make the floor and it's no issue whatsoever. Uh, I want to go back with rubber mat, maybe. I might go back with carpet, who knows. And uh, if I can find some carpet, uh, the carpet in the roadster didn't turn out too bad, but I definitely want to be doing the interior in this car eventually. And I want to put windows in it. I want to put glass in it because the windows are just in terrible shape. So I'm just leaning back so far. You know, I guess I could probably sleep like this. I just can't drive like this. All right. Uh, pump it a couple of times. Starts right up. So anyway, that's the deal and the plans on this one. That's why I haven't been driving it. Uh, even though I like the car brakes are good. They're done running wise. It's good. It don't heat no issues Whatsoever got all the lights working. I just like I said don't like the way it sits. So we'll get that straightened out Okay, folks now that I've confused everybody with all my uh, different plans. I've got let me uh, Try to clear it up a little bit here uh, the plan is for the next about week I've got to do some cleaning here in front of the shop so moving around, we're going to try to build a shop vac, uh, sort of on steroids, and we're going to try to build a 14 by 18 uh, shed welded together, uh, and then we're going to try to move it and set it, flip it back over and set it up beside this shop. On the shop vac, if, uh, if anybody can give me any pointers, you know, the plans is to... Uh, to filter it using like uh, air conditioning filters and uh, I was going to build a square sort of on the side of it to where you could open a door on the top and slide the filter out that would be separate from actually taking the door off the top and uh, and again to show you what I go through Nana what are you doing anybody else got problems with cats on your shoulder hmm and uh, so anyway, that's the plan is to put the uh, the filters uh, or filter or filters. I may stack a couple uh, on the outside and then uh, uh, I'm going to run, I guess, plastic PVC pipe for from the pump because it's uh, I think it's like three inch pipe and I can't get uh, or I don't have any steel pipe big enough. So I've got to make a run to Lowe's to be able to get all that and then uh, uh, just pipe it up and and like I said just vacuum the tank and uh, I don't know if there's any tricks or uh, anything to uh, To help and you know to make it work of like location of where to put the hoses in I was just gonna do uh, The the suction in with the filters on the top on one side of the barrel and then go to the other side and and put the uh, The other one and then maybe a deflector shield to to deflect it down that way anything coming in the pipe won't shoot straight over to the filter it would have to deflect down first and maybe the the uh, weight of it would uh, 
you know, sort of force it down. So uh, we'll design it and do it as we go, and I'll show you. And you know, if it works, it works. If it don't, you know, uh, you know, we we wasted a little time, and that's about it. So anyway, I appreciate everybody watching, and uh, Nana. Tell them bye, Nana. All right. Okay, folks, got a lot of comments about the chainsaw. So I figured I would uh, just show what I was using. It's 80 volt cobalt. Uh, it's actually my son's chainsaw he bought. And I like it. I didn't think I would like a rechargeable, but uh, it's not bad. Uh, weight wise, it's about the same, I guess, as what a gas saw would be. Uh, you're definitely not losing any weight. I mean, it's a heavy built saw. Does good. I really like it, especially at wrecks and stuff. And I've been lucky that I've had it with me a couple times when I've needed it. And uh, as you've seen, that was a pretty good tree. You know, it's 18 inch bar, and that tree was about, what, 19 inches across. They've done a good job. I don't know what different sizes they make. Uh, if any of them are maybe uh, lighter than this one. But, you know, this is, like I said, no lighter than what. Uh, what a gas saw would be and of course you still got to run bar oil electricity don't uh, don't change that but it does good it, you know it's just like any other saw in a good chain uh, had a few people that said something about the hydraulic saw why didn't use it 25 foot hose on the hydraulic saw and I actually used the hoses for something else I actually used one of them on the rollback but uh, I've got a lot of reusable ends so if I have a hose and it's longer than I needed or wrong ends, I can change out the ends. So I sort of borrowed them. And I never had the quick connects. I had to use the quick connects that was on my Form 1 bucket. So I'm going to go get me or order me some good hose, probably 50 foot or two 50 foot pieces, 100 foot. And I'm going to dedicate them for that saw. Uh, that saw works really well. It would have cut that tree down with no problem. Uh, and some of you may have seen it, some of you haven't. I'll put the link in the description of the video of that saw and me testing it. It's a military uh, saw, and I just ran it on the remote hydraulics of my, my old skid steer. So, anyway, so uh, the tree's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. All right.